1 Samuel chapter 2 and verse 30. I had promised, the Lord says, 1 Samuel 2.30, that your house, he's telling Eli, the house of your father will be my priests forever. That was God's plan. But it will not be so. You know, God can have a plan for your life and it may not be fulfilled. Here's a classic example of that. I believe God has a plan for every child that is born into the world. Even the children of, especially the children of God's people. But I've seen in my lifetime, in most of the cases, that plan is not fulfilled. And it's 100% because of the failure of the parents who do not teach their children God's ways from the childhood. And the Lord says, if you esteem your children more than me, that's what he's saying there earlier, you, verse 29, you honored your children more than me. You didn't want to offend them. You didn't want to hurt them. You didn't want to rebuke them. You didn't want to correct them. You were not strict with them. Okay? Well, then you'll be despised by me. In the last part of verse 30, I honor only those who honor me. This is the verse I was telling you has been a very favorite verse of mine for many years. The Lord says, those who honor me, I will honor. Please remember that all your life. 1 Samuel 2.30. It's easy to remember the numbers. 1, 2, 3, 0. 1 Samuel 2.30. Uh, those who honor me, I will honor. But those who don't honor me, I will despise them. They despise me, I despise them. So it's a very serious thing. Though, and think of the tremendous blessing it is if God can honor you. And God can honor your family. I tell you, it becoming a billionaire is rubbish compared to that. You can be a poor brother. You don't earn so much. You don't have much in your bank account. But you're a person whom God honors. You're more blessed than all those people with their millions and billions and trillions. Uh, it is. So you'll see that in the long run. If you don't see it now, you'll certainly see it when Christ comes back. So those are the people who really spent their life usefully on the earth. Those who decided in every area to honor God completely, never to do anything wrong. If they pay, have to pay their taxes, they will pay it exactly. Maybe there are certain, certain income you have which the IRS can never find out. Okay. But God sees it. You, are you going to be honest about it? The Romans 13 says we have to pay our taxes. We read that even Jesus paid his taxes through Peter when the people came and asked for the temple tax. We, I'm talking about a small thing like that. Honoring God about being faithful in little things, faithful with money, never to have anything with us which we have borrowed from somebody and not returned. Never to take advantage of anybody in any way. These are the little, little things in which we honor God. I want to, oh, I wish I could raise up brothers and sisters in a church where everybody will seek to honor God. Not to become great preachers, no. I never in my life had an intention to be a preacher. I, when, I was, when I first became a Christian, I didn't even know the Bible. I read the Bible for the first time after I was born again. And, uh, but I decided I want to honor God. I have no intention to be a full-time worker or preacher. and things. That's something God called me to later. But I said, I want to honor God in little things. Whatever, if this was the right thing to do, I would do it. I remember in the Navy, once, uh, <clears throat> I'll give you one example. I was uh, appointed in charge of all the boats in the naval base in one port in India. And, uh, you know, all the officers like me could take the boats for our own private use, provided we paid for the diesel that you put into the boat, you know, and you pay for the fuel. But when the captain that means the commanding officer of the whole unit, took the boat. Uh, officers who worked under him would be reluctant to send him a bill for the fuel. 
So how could you show how the boat was taken? Everybody would write, ah, the captain has gone for harbor inspection in his boat. Well, he didn't go for any harbor inspection. He went for a picnic with his family. So he was supposed to pay, but that's what every boat officer came, did. <laughs> Until one day I was appointed as a boat officer. I was only about 24 years old. And uh, I sent the captain a bill. First time in his life, he gets a bill for going on a picnic. And the one who was second in command, who was a commander under the captain, came to me and said, Lieutenant Poonin, don't you know, didn't the earlier officer tell you what to do when the captain takes the boat? Put it as harbor inspection. I said, sir, he took it out for a picnic with his family. And he has to pay for it just like anybody else. Well, he couldn't say anything to that. But in half an hour, I was transferred out of my job. I said, fine. They shunted me off to another job. And I said, OK. I can tell you instances like that that happened in my life in the Navy. OK, it was inconvenient and a bit humiliating to be kicked out of where I was. And, but I saw, I didn't know where it was finally going to end. But the Lord watched me doing that in different situations on the ship and in the naval base over a period of years. And then one day the Lord said, I'm calling you to serve me, to quit your job. I said, wow, you're calling me to serve you. What an honor. Then I realized, now when I look back, it wasn't just that the Lord picked out some name from somewhere. I saw from this verse that he is seeking to honor those who would honor him. And I realized as I look around, there are so many people whom God could have chosen. I remember years ago, I said, Lord, India has got 1,300 million people, more than four times the population of the United States, more than four times. And the area is much less than the US, probably one third of the US. And I said, Lord, with these 1,300 million people in India, where are the prophets? Don't you love India? Where are the prophets in this country? Don't haven't you called anybody? And the Lord said to me, yes, I did call some. But I have to test them. And they failed. Some went after money. Some married the wrong person. They fell in love with somebody who was not wholehearted. And various things that I test. I don't appoint a man for his ministry before I test him through many, many, many situations. And then I decide whether I can trust him. If he honors me, I will honor him. He doesn't honor me, I'll just set him aside. No, he won't send him to hell, but he'll miss out on what God sent him to earth for. That's the thing that gripped my heart. Lord, I did not know in my unconverted days as a young man, as a teenager or anything, what you called me for. But when I really got converted and became a serious Christian, I realized that when I was in my mother's womb, God had a plan for my life. And that's true of all of you who are listening to me. Whether it will be fulfilled or not depends on you. It doesn't depend on God. It depends on you. It depends on one thing. Whether you will honor God in your life. Not by attending a meeting like this or giving a little money in the offering box. God's not a beggar. And he's not bankrupt. He doesn't need your money. That's what I keep preaching. He needs people. The Bible says, present your body as a living sacrifice, not, a, not your money. God's looking for people who will give him their body and their mind, and their whole personality. And say, Lord, you, you sent me to this earth, brought me out of my mother's womb one day to be one who will honor you in my life. I want to do that. You gave me a family so that I could honor you by bringing up that family in a God-fearing way and teach my children to honor you. Not just feed them, clothe them, and educate them and get them all established in good jobs. That's all necessary so they don't become beggars. We don't want our children to be homeless people standing on the street asking for money. That's why we educate them. But our primary purpose is we must teach them to honor God. 
because the promise is those who honor me, I will honor. I wish you'll never forget this. God doesn't honor everybody. He honors those who honor him. We must teach our children to stand up for the truth, even if they suffer loss. And to be different from people around, <clears throat> around them. <clears throat>